Right, so here's the uh, X100 expansion board for the uh, Raspberry Pi uh, Revision 2 Model B. Uh, this is from a company called Subtronics. I will put a link down in the uh, description box to their website. Um, so it comes in a box. I have unpacked it from the uh, bag. I bought this from Deal Extreme. Um, it's about 38 bucks, uh, which makes it more expensive than the Raspberry Pi itself. But I didn't pay much for the Raspberry Pi personally, so I got this pretty cheap if you look at it that way. So I'll open it up. Um, got a little neat little box. Uh, first off, you get a little bag here. Um, this contains a couple of things. You got a HDMI uh, connector bridge. You got a uh, USB connector bridge. This is just a piece of, or three pieces of uh, uh, circuit board, basically, FR4. And then you got four nylon screws and two nylon standoffs. And then you got the uh, expansion board itself. See if you can get it open here. Right, so here it is. Uh, got four USB ports here. Uh, that port is a uh, input port, so you got three, three uh, ports on the hub here, and you got one free on the Raspberry Pi itself uh, with this on. So you got a total of four USB ports, which is nice. You get the HDMI in and a VGA out. So this got a totally standalone. Uh, HDMI to the uh, VGA converter on it, and that's being powered by uh, that DC barrel jack there. Um, this board got a uh, DC-DC converter on it that uh, gives 5 volts and up to 3 amps out. And uh, it takes, uh, now let's see, what the hell is it? It's 6 to 23 volts in, so that's a very nice range on it, and it also powers the Raspberry Pi itself. And then you got a RTC clock. Let's see, that would be yeah, that chip there, I presume. It's in a little RTC. Or no, it's actually in the bottom here. There it is. And a coin cell battery there. And that connects to the uh, GPIO headers. And then you have a 8 channel Darling Darlington driver there, which goes out to these connectors. And you can uh, select with the dip switches here which uh, GPIO pins you want to use with those channels. And then you got a onboard RS-232 port, which is very nice. You got a SD card reader here, which also got a micro SD card reader on the bottom. You can only use one slot at a time because they're just hooked in parallel. You get two slots on the board here, one there and one there. They are for threading through the flat flex for the uh, expansion header and the uh, camera header on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, you also got a header here that goes to the, this button here. That's for the reset of the uh, Raspberry Pi. So I have actually sheeted in a bit here. You do get this little two pin uh, female header there too. Uh, and you just solder that on the board. It's totally optional. Um, so is the use of the uh, HDMI to VGA converter. You don't have to use it. It's just there for convenience, which is nice. So uh, let's plug it on, shall we? Start by putting the standoffs onto the Raspberry Pi itself. Ooh, that's a very nice fit on those screws. Look to be M3 thread, which is nice. It's a bit standard. Let's see, get a screwdriver here. Don't over tighten them because it's plastic. You will strip threads quite easily. You don't want to really, really, like, to brutally force it on there. Just snug and nice, really. Just so the board sits there. See if we can manage to get thread this on. This was a little tricky. 
the screw is there we go. It's a bit smushed in the end there. Right, and then personally I'm going to put this backing on the Raspberry Pi now. Um, this is the uh, bottom for a box I got, but it makes a nice bottom plate for it. I also got a cutout there for my micro SD adapter. So let's slot it on. Like so. And then we want to align the uh, GPIO headers and then the uh, reset button header here. That's a bit. Wonky, there we go. And there, ever so gently push it on. Is that it? No, one down a bit more. There we go. And then we want to put the uh, two remaining screws in. They're a bit tricky to thread, but it's okay. Could have used metal screws and standoffs for this, but really, uh, there's no need for it. It sits very nicely together, anyways. Oh, that's actually a bit tricky. And I just managed to get the screw stuck here. I'm just gonna set it down. That's a lot easier. See, this one was very tricky to get down. There we go. Because it's in between a couple of jacks. And this screwdriver is a tad too small for this, but it works. Right, uh, so that's that. It makes quite a massive stack of stuff, basically. And then we plug the uh, USB link in, like so, just sits there, and then the uh, nice gold plated HDMI link, that one fits a little weird, there we go, that's, that's a bit tight to get in actually, there we go, uh, so that's that, um, this is supposed to work with Raspbian, with some drivers for the RTC, so I will install that now. And uh, okay, yeah. I got the uh, RTC and everything working now. Uh, it was no hassle at all. It was just a bit time-consuming to uh, uh, download and install and configure the RTC driver, but it works just fine. I could read the uh, time from the RTC there, no problem at all. So that's just lovely. It works really well. Um, first impressions, uh, this works really well. Um, although the uh, HDMI to VGA converter, the uh, USB controller, and the uh, switching chip for the uh, DC DC converter all run very warm. So I will cut up this heatsink and put that on there because it runs really warm. Uh, for some reason, uh, but it is working, it's working very nicely, and it's powered off of that old uh, ATX power supply down there, so let's start the uh, UI here, and I'm gonna try to put a SD card into it, because I haven't actually tried that yet, let's just grab this. Wait for it to uh, initialize everything. Yeah, it usually takes a while. The Raspberry Pi isn't really a race machine. Uh, so I will be doing some tinkering with the uh, RS-232 port because that's a bit more fun to fiddle with now when I got a proper uh, port for it. Oh, this is all wonky. Let's see if we can auto adjust the screen here. 
Okay, so it doesn't actually fill a 19 inch. It seems like it thinks it's a 17 inch. So let's plunk this SD card in here. I have no idea what this is gonna do. I suppose it's just gonna appear like a USB drive. Oh yeah, look at that. Removable medium is inserted. So that seems to work. Yep, and it's empty. But it works. That's nice. Um, so yeah, that pretty much concludes this right now. It works really well, it runs a bit warm, but it's just easy to fix with a bit of heat sink. Um, so that's that basically. Um, thanks for watching this video. Hope you liked it, hope it was somewhat helpful. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.